This is a Jaguar AJ30 3.0 litre V6 engine, um, which is extremely closely related to the Ford Duratec V6. Fitted to it is a Jaguar S-type flywheel and clutch. Originally, this was from an automatic. This engine <coughs> um, converted to manual with a flywheel and clutch from a manual Jaguar S-type, and that's fine. Now this is a Mazda RX-8 gearbox. RX-8 gearbox. RX um, Mazda is obviously quite known for being rotary engines, uh, wankel engines, if you will, and not Jaguar V6s. Now it's quite nice that it's possible for a quite a modest fee to get an adapter plate which bolts onto the back of the Jaguar engine that enables you to um, bolt up the um, Mazda gearbox onto it and it all fits lovely. But for a long time I have worried about this thing in here. Now this is the input shaft to the Mazda gearbox. So when, you, um, when, the gear, when the clutch is engaged on the back of the engine here and the engine's spinning round, um, the splines on the clutch plate in here which grip onto, let's put the light onto it, which grip onto these splines in here. I hope you can see that. Now this is a um, master gearbox obviously. The Jaguar uh, clutch plate unfortunately won't fit on the, um, uh, on the master gearbox. So what I've got inside the pressure plate diaphragm uh, flywheel clutch assembly is not a Jaguar um, S-type clutch, it's a Mazda RX-8 oh, it's a Mazda RX-8 clutch and hence that obviously does engage on there perfectly well. Great, absolutely wonderful um, but there's one thing I've been worrying about and that is that um, and for reasons that I don't really understand it appears that rear wheel drive cars such as the Mazda um, and indeed the Jaguar have a thing called a spigot bearing and the spigot bearing supports the front of the in input shaft so that there's no bending forces on it and the uh, clutch plate isn't free to kind of orbit around and cause vibrations and so on just noticing a whole bunch of detritus in here uh, and in fact, if you use a um, uh, Ford ZTEC engine onto a uh, from a, from a Focus or a Mondeo or something, and put that onto a Ford Type 9 gearbox, for example, which I have done a number of times, um, in that case you have to fit a thing called a spigot bearing, and um, you put it into the back of the um, flywheel. It's a little needle roller thing which the plain part of the shaft goes into and it stops it from shaking around. Um, interestingly, when fitted to a Mondeo or a Focus, which of course are front wheel drive cars, you don't need a spigot bearing, but in a rear wheel, rear wheel drive uh, configuration, you do. So you have to add a spigot bearing. This is onto uh, various uh, car car conversions, kit cars and things. That you may have seen me look at before. Anyway, because of all that, um, I've been worried about the presence or otherwise of a spigot bearing in the back of this engine. Now I have realised since looking at this that maybe I was worrying about the wrong thing because of course this is this engine is from or this clutch um, uh, flywheel is actually from a rear wheel drive car. So um, there's two questions that I want to be answered. One is, is this, is, well, three questions. Is there a spigot bearing in there? Is this the right size for it? And does this reach far enough that way to engage with it? And that's what I've been uh, wanting to try out. Now, the first thing I did, well, actually, I'm lying. <laughs> I didn't do this first, I did it in an illogical order. <coughs> So what I did 
I measured the size of the input shaft of the um, RX8 gearbox. 15 millimeters. And uh, <clears throat> then I tried various size things into the back of the flywheel. Now I should take you down to see if you possibly I'll do that. Actually, I will do that. I'll get you down. Now, can you see? If I point, can you see? But just in here, there's some long, thin things in a circle. And that, I'm pointing at them, and that is indeed a spigot bearing. So, um, Question number one is answered. Is there a spigot bearing? Yes, there is. So, question number two, what diameter is it? And I've already measured this as being 15 millimeters. And as luck would have it, I have a piece of 15 millimeter copper plumbing pipe, which uh, goes in there very nicely. You can actually feel it engage. So, yes. And I suppose this is really by chance. Because of course, well, some might say that the Mazda and the Ford um, engine ge gearbox combos are actually related. But I won't go into that right now. Let's move this aside for a moment. Never mind. So, first two questions are answered. Yes, we have a spigot bearing. Yes, um, it uh, is the right size. So the next question is, where is the spigot bearing in relation to the front face of the gearbox? Uh, the adapter plate on the gearbox, I should say. So I'm going to measure that rather crudely. And now it's not going in when it was a minute ago. Perhaps it was the other end I had. There we go. I did say it was a quite a precise fit. So my piece of copper pipe here is now right at the back of the... Uh, recess that's effectively in the end of the crankshaft. Now I could make a special jig for this, but quite honestly I couldn't be bothered. So I'm just going to hold this on here, and I'm interested to know whether that sticks out past the end of the front face, or not as far, or what have you. So that's having got this in place. Let's see what the relationship is. Now, if I was really clever, I would have at hand something straight. Well, okay. Now, this is a kind of imprecise, slightly imprecise, as that was done very much by hand. It was kind of rather imprecise, but I think you can see that if anything, there's a gap here, a gap here, which means that the back of the hole is, I don't know, five millimeters. Um, behind the front face of the flywheel, oh, sorry, the front face of the adapter plate. So the back of the hole in the crankshaft is very five millimeters behind the front face of the adapter plate. And if we look at the 
front face of the Mazda gearbox. We can see that the input shaft is very slightly behind the rear face of the uh, bell housing. So what that tells me is that this, which obviously matches this, and the back of the, mark, of the hole in the crankshaft is slightly behind here, and this is slightly in front. The input shaft is slightly in front of here. And it's the right size, and there is a spigot bearing. So that, my friends, is very good news. And it is a coincidence, as far as I'm concerned, um, that it appears that the RX-8 gearbox with the adapter plate fits the spigot bearing from the Jaguar S-Type um, flywheel perfectly well. Guess what? The battery ran out at the precise moment. Anyway, that's a massive coincidence as far as I'm concerned. I, it is obvious um, that there is some cooperation between Mazda and Ford, but for it to match quite so perfectly as that, including having an adapter plate in there, which is 10mm thick by the way, it's just bizarre. I think the um, spigot bearing itself is probably about 10mm long, so it has the possibility of going in and out in a 10 um, about 10 millimeters um, but just bizarre really that, um, that the RX-8 and the Jaguar parts could match together seemingly totally perfectly and bear in mind by the way I've had this bolted together for ages I even know the clutch works I haven't started the engine but that's another story how the clutch uh, engages and indeed disengages so um, yeah Perfect. Oh. So what I need to do now is to reconnect the uh, engine and the gearbox and bolt them up together. Uh, I'm just um, showing you, I've used a piece of threaded studding in here, uh, which have got slotted ends by the way, slotted so that I can put a screwdriver across and tighten them if needed. Uh, because that appeared to be quite a lot easier than trying to align bolts um, to go right through from the uh, gearbox to the uh, engine itself. And I also <coughs> draw attention to this, which is the hole that was cut out to accommodate the Jaguar starter motor which uh, is over here and this is a feature of the design if you like getting into this more detritus here um, a feature of the design of the uh, adapter plate which is this grey thing here uh, the adapter plate is fitted onto the engine with these bolts here with some countersunk um, screws here and here and here as well and, and here yeah so yeah, a multitude of fixings to fix the um, adapter plate to the engine and then I have to bolt it up finally to the uh, gearbox itself which I hope will be the last time that I actually do that. I was hoping it had already gone on for the last time to be honest but I did think that I really ought to um, check that spigot bearing. So, I'll lift it into place. There's a couple of nuts ready. Now, getting these two aligned is a bit of a fiddle. I've got the engine partially suspended from the ceiling. But of 
course it has a tendency to swing around. And the gearbox also has a tendency to fall over. That's due to the mountings at the back onto the middle. Stage one. Whew. The rest of it is just fiddling. If you see what I mean. <clears throat> Getting the clutch splines to engage and that aforementioned spigot bearing as well. Now I'm just going to do this up gently. And hopefully it will go together. Go back together. Yeah, it was after all together only an hour or so ago. It's not quite together. You can see there's a bit of an angle here. Don't put your fingers in. So I just need to rotate the crankshaft slightly, I think. After a bit more jiggery pokery, it's all together. In fact, now I'm actually fitting um, spring washers. Because I intend that this shall be the last time this engine has to be dismantled. As it all tightens up all the way around the edge and I've even got one more um, one more bolt than I had previously which is on the opposite side this one screws into the adapter plate there's dowels at various points as well ouch and that's it so the engine is fitted to the gearbox and we know that it engages properly. If you got as far as this, thanks very much for watching. And um, in case you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. That would be really encouraging for me. So catch you on the next one.